see you spend Conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, and whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Everyone, raise your right hand. You want to raise your right hands and repeat after me: I have redemption, I have redemption. through Jesus Christ's, blood. Jesus Christ's blood and the forgiveness of sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, on today, Lord Jesus, for how you have redeemed us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for paying the ransom on the cross for us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, God, for your shed blood on Calvary, Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for how you forgave us of our sins, Lord Jesus, and how your shed blood on the cross provided us, O oh God, with forgiveness of our sins, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you went through, God. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for every pain, O oh God, for all of the sins of the world were put upon you, God. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you on today, God. Thank you for bringing our great kinsman redeemer, God. Thank you for redeeming us, O oh God, of our sins. Thank you, God, Jesus, for taking God, all of our sins, God. Lord, we are grateful on today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are grateful on today, God. Thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for how you did it, Lord Jesus. You did not have to do it, but you did, oh God. So for that, God, we give you praise on today, God. For that, oh Lord Jesus, we give your name the praise on today, God. We worship you in spirit and in truth, oh Lord Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Raise your right hand. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for how you have blessed us, oh God, in every need that we have, every spiritual need, oh God, every emotional need, every physical need, God, you have met and you will meet, continue to meet, oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you will continue to pour down your blessings upon your people, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for your spiritual blessings, God. Oh God, for we know that you have all power, God. You have all strength, Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, we, oh God, offer you, oh God, praise God. We offer us your, ourselves unto you, oh Lord God, as we bless your name, God. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. If your hands raised. I am saved by grace through faith. I am not saved by my own works. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for saving us by your grace, God. Through your faith, oh God. Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for we cannot be saved by our works, Lord God, but we are only saved by your grace, oh God. We are saved by your mercies, God. We, oh God, we cannot do it within our own selves, God. We cannot do it within our own works, oh God, but only through your God, through your grace, oh God. For Lord Jesus, we should have been cut off, God. But we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. We deserve to be killed, Lord. We deserve death, oh God. But your grace provided us with life, oh God. Your new covenant provided us with grace and life, oh God. So Lord, we thank you on today, God. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. With your right hand raised, I have what I say I have. I can do what I say I can do. For God's promises are yes and amen. For me, because I am in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh God, right now, Lord Jesus, for how you have made ways and no ways, Lord Jesus. We praise you, oh Lord Jesus, even now for promises that you have made, oh God. Promises that you have made to individuals, promises that you have made to KLT, God. 
promises that you have made to families on today. Promises that you have made to nations, oh God. Lord God, we know that they shall come to pass. They shall come to fruition, oh God. Because you are a God of promise, God. You are a covenant-keeping God, Lord Jesus. So Lord God, we thank you, oh Lord Jesus, on today, God. For we know that your promises are yes and amen for us, so oh God. So Lord Jesus, even now, God, as we enter into the purpose of this service on today, God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that your glory will be in this place. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, oh God, that your anointing, oh God, will fall down upon us, Lord Jesus. We pray for your spiritual guidance in here, God. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, that you would have your way in this place, oh Lord Jesus. Not for form of fashion, Lord Jesus, but as someone might be saved. Someone might be delivered. Someone might be set free, oh God. Someone might be baptized and filled with your blessed Holy Ghost, God. So Lord Jesus, even now, God, we pray that you pull down strongholds, Lord God. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, that, oh God, that you would destroy every yoke of bondage, Lord God. And Satan, the Lord will keep you out of this place, out of this service, oh God. And you get the glory out of us, oh God, on today is our prayer, God. We pray the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' master's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 And at this time, we are in the hands of our lady, Sandra Canyon, to lead us in the praise and worship.
Our quarterly day given for the 2023 fourth quarter is due on Sunday, January 14th. This will be received during our cheerful given time. Bronze tier is $100, silver $250, gold $500, and platinum $1,000. Please do your very best for this quarterly day given. Our 21-day consecration fast prayer service will be taking place this Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Doors open at 6.45 p.m. Sunday Empowerment Worship Service with Pastor Jason Rockanyon will take place next Sunday. Services begin at 11.30 a.m. Doors open at 11.15 a.m. The series is Spiritual Warfare. Grace. This is Pastor J. Samuel Canyon, and I am here to welcome you all to our 21-day consecration fast as we do this unto the Lord for all of the things that he is about to do for us here at the Kingdom Life Temple. And we know that the theme is next level, increase, enlarge, and take over. Taken from Job chapter 8, verse 7, where it says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Again, we are going to a next level in this new year. And we will be having our 21 day consecration fast beginning this Sunday, January 14th at 6 a.m. And it concludes on Sunday, February 4th at 6 a.m. During this time, we will be having a prayer service every Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here at KLT. Also, our consecration prayer times during the day are 12 noon. 12 noon. That's the name when the police have prayer at 12 noon for at least 15 minutes and also again at 12 midnight for at least 15 minutes to have a prayer go before the lord in prayer and we also will be serving communion every sunday during this consecration our special consecration notes are that there are no fried foods sugar milk eggs dairy cheese flour honey chips, bread, white pasta, white rice, meats, seafood, butter, soda, juice, coffee, or sweeteners. Also, moderate TV time and only listen to gospel music that you are putting on. We can't control where we are, what people are playing, but in our own houses and in our own vehicles as we're driving, we can control what music we are listening to listen to gospel music that you want to be feeding your soul during this time of consecration as we set apart ourselves unto the lord's work you fasting instructions for under 10 years old are no chips cookies or soda that's for everyone that is under 10 years old no chips cookies or soda for all those that are above 10 years old and for every adult from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. There will be no food, only water and tea. No food, only water and tea from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. After 2 p.m., you may add fresh fruits, vegetables, matzo bread, vegetable or coconut oil, and homemade fruit or vegetable juice. That's after 2 p.m. Now after 6 p.m. you may add whole wheat pasta, potatoes, brown rice, non-meat soup broth, with herbs and approved items that we've already went through, and tomato sauce which must be either plain or with herbs 
And again, if you're going to get any canned fruit or anything that's canned, make sure there is no, there is no added sugar. There must be no added sugar to any canned fruits or vegetables. As we know, fruits and vegetables already have a certain amount of sugar in them, which is fine. However, we do not want any added sugar in any canned fruit or vegetables. May the Lord bless you and keep you, for we are going to our next level, for this is the year 2024. And the Lord has decreed and declared that this is our year, the year of increase, enlarge, and take over. For KLT has much work to do here in the kingdom of God and in this Franklin Borough community. Keep us in prayer as I will keep you in prayer. The best is yet. Stay connected with KLT by sending a text message to 833 833- 338-9693 to receive KLT updates and events. Thank you for watching. Kindly follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram or TikTok or on our website at www.kingdomlifetemplenj.com KLT, changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall go. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated.
Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for life on today. Thank you for the activities of our limbs, Lord Jesus. Thank you for how you have blessed us, oh God. Oh God, and how you shall bless us, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, oh Lord Jesus, even now, God. We pray that you would decrease flesh, that your spirit might be increased, oh Lord God. And Lord Jesus, even now, God, is our prayer that you will have your way in this place, oh God. Let your kind of glory fall from on high, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, all of the people of God say, Amen. 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 Standing for the scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work who will believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the earth, to the church rather. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Blessed is the reading of the word of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And this is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. We learn about various things. How great is God's power yeah. at work in the lives of the believer? In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 19, Paul prayed for the Ephesians to comprehend how great God's power was in their lives. In fact, he says the power is incomparably great, meaning that there is no power like it. There is no power greater than our God. How many yes. people know that? That there is no power that is greater than our God. Hallelujah. Not the atomic bomb, nope. not love, not hate, not politics, not climate change, not world dictators, not the mafia, not gangs, not violence, nor anything else, not COVID-19, not the flu, but our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. For our consuming God reigns supreme above all, above all things. No matter what you're going through, God reigns supreme above it all. So the implication of Paul's prayer and description of this power was that these believers were living below the power available to them. And that they were living below their privilege. This no doubt showed up in an inability to conquer sin. To have joy in Christ and to persevere through trials and tribulations in their lives. It's no different for us. We oftentimes live lives that are sub Christian. We are missing God's best with sub Christian lives, living below our privilege. We're missing God's best for us. However, the reality is that. God, through his divine power, has given us everything we need for life and to be holy as our God is holy. There is no legitimate reason why we should lack God's abundant life and holiness. For God has given us his power and his resources. The only reason that we would not have his power and light radiating in our life is due to our own shortcomings. So just repeat after me and say, I shall never be defeated. I shall never be defeated. We're going to share on that for the next fleeting moments. Hallelujah. 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 So it was because of our own shortcomings of not praying daily, not studying our Bibles to prove ourselves to God and man, not fasting when we ought to, and refusing to hear and obey the voice of God. You know you are not in the movie The Sixth Sense and hearing dead people, but you are hearing the God who raised the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're hearing the God that raised the dead, the God that performs miracles that heal sick bodies. 
but the shortcomings of procrastinating our acceptance of our call to God should never be for the life of the believers because we should not have a spirit of procrastination. We should not have a spirit of procrastination where we are um, where we, God has told us what to do, God has told us where to go, and we refuse to do what God has told us to do. We keep putting it off, we keep putting it off, but God has said to go because he has told you to go. So it's better to be obedient to God than to sacrifice. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we continue to reject God's call thereby alienating ourselves from becoming all that God desires for us to be and to become in this dying world. How many know that this is a dying yes, world? Yes, it is a dying world. Many people say that this is a world where, you know, this is the land of the living, but really when you think about it, this is the land of the dying because all of us have an appointed day where we shall die if, the, if Jesus Christ does not crack the sky, come back to bring us back into heaven with him, right? Then we would have to go by the way of the grave. So this is a dying world. This is really not a world of life because of the original sin that Adam and Eve went through. Because of their disobedience to God. Eating the, from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Amen. One of the trees that they were not supposed to eat from, the other tree, the tree of life. But because of their disobedience, now we are living in a dying world. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 to 23, Paul goes to great lengths to describe this power. Uh -huh. He says that God publicly displayed this power in Christ and is now operating in us. The same power that resided in Jesus Christ is residing in you today through our sweet communion with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you can't have God's power if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Some may often wonder why they don't see miracles, signs, and wonders. But they yes. Never, ever stop to think that you cannot get power right. out of the power of lips. Yes. You cannot get power out of the power of lips. So it is the powerless ones that have not been saved and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Well, it is the greatness of God's power to us was displayed in Christ's resurrection. In the Old Testament, people often measured God's power by the creation of the earth, the universe, and all that he created. In Isaiah 40 and 28, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. Uh -huh. So however in the New Testament it is measured by the miracle of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Why is this miracle so great? Why is this miracle so great? It is simply because nobody other than Christ has defeated death. Hallelujah. That's why we shall never be defeated. defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is simply because nobody other than Christ has defeated death, defeated Hades, defeated hell. Hallelujah. Has all power and hallelujah. There are kings, presidents, heroes, and spiritual leaders that all die and none have experienced this kind of resurrection. Man has not and cannot conquer death regardless of the great scientific and medical advancements made today. No one has or will ever figure out 
how to stop death because death is not in the hands of man, but death and life is in the, is in the power of our tongues because it is through Christ Jesus who has all power. This power is only in God and was displayed in Jesus Christ through the way that Jesus Christ loved his people, the way that Jesus Christ loved the sinner man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why even as us as Christians, we also must love one another. We also must love the sinner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that is the way that Christ did in order for us to not be defeated, we must be more like Christ yes. each and every day. So some might say, well, Christ was not the first person raised from the dead. There were others. This is true. However, Christ's resurrection was unique. Because yes. he was the first to be raised from the dead and to never die again. again. Yes. For Jesus Christ resurrected on the third day after his death on the cross at Calvary. And now he is alive forevermore. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shall never be defeated. The first resurrection recorded in the Bible was when Elijah raised the widow's son in 1 Kings chapter 17. However, this child eventually died again. Christ raised Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. But he also died again later. And every other resurrected person in history eventually died again. Essentially, one could say, death, though delayed, eventually got the victory. But this was not true of Jesus Christ. He rose from the dead never to die again. God, through his power, conquered death. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 says this about the Lord Jesus Christ. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Being that we are God's instruments, his vessels of clay. We need to get in the word and stay there. No matter what curveballs life may throw us. Do not detour, but stay on the right path of faith. Which leads to God. And remember to give God all of the praise and glory which is due unto him. Praise him for what he has done. Praise him for what he is doing. And praise him for what he shall do. Being that we are God's instruments. God will use us to fulfill his will upon this earth. As earthen vessels, we must remind ourselves on a daily basis that everything that we do is all for God's glory, yes. not for ourselves. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What were we always saying? Remember, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's not about our kingdom. It's not about ourselves, but it's all supposed to be about God. Hallelujah. So get your pride in order and retain a spirit of humility yes. in your service unto God. After all, it was pride that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven in the first place. Yes. So don't allow the same thing to occur to you. Uh -huh. For you have been warned by God. Hallelujah. Warned by the Holy Spirit. But we have a proclivity to always believe that the preacher is talking to somebody else. Well, I am speaking to you on today. We all deal with pride issues, some more than others. But at some point in life, our pride issues will get us to have a big ego and a big head. Right? You know, as you think about the movie Boss Baby... Uh, most of those boss baby himself, his head is a lot bigger than his whole body, right? But he has a very big ego. Is that why his head is big, right? So whether wanted or unwanted, uh -huh. but it is up to you 
to yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Yes. As I take my seat, learn to keep love, humility, peace, and wisdom at the core of your being as you continue to seek the more of God and his power. Amen. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Amen. I shall rise, I shall be. I shall go in victory. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me will ever overtake me. I'll never be defeated, never be defeated. The devil is a liar, Amen. and God is exalted. exalted. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We we'll give God a praise. We thank God for this word on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall never be defeated. I shall never be defeated as we are talking about spiritual warfare. We shall never be defeated because we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus, the one that has all power. Amen. So we shall never be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time we're going to have our communion. So if we can. Amen. We can start opening that now. Our Holy Communion Scripture reading comes from First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses twenty three through thirty. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are, are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Amen. I said I want to please stand at this time. Lord Jesus, even now, God, we pray, Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would bless this wafer, Lord Jesus, which is symbolic of your broken body, Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you would bless, oh Lord Jesus, this cup, Lord Jesus, which is symbolic of your said blood on the cross for us, Lord Jesus. But Lord God, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that we, as we remember you, Lord Jesus, that you remain faithful as we remain faithful to you. Lord Jesus is our prayer, God, on today. Amen. Amen. Lord, even right now, take e e all of it. And drink. Drink e all of it. So, Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this service. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time of remembrance of your broken body and your shed blood on the cross for us, Lord Jesus. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all the people of God say, Amen. Amen.